I was just talking to you uh, out there about, yeah, touring a little bit. You said you haven't toured in six years. Almost six years. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Um... I don't know, man. I think I just... Just kind of took me a second to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And then I guess took me out some more time still. Yeah. I love so many things and I'm into so many different things that I'm able to enjoy creating different worlds. It doesn't really change who I am as a person. Yeah. You know, I'm the same guy, whether today's session was rap or fucking country, you know, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. It's just all, who who says there has to be limits, yeah. limitations. But yeah, you're on tour now, you just did Central Park. Yeah, it was crazy. It still was warming up. So many, no, it was a fantastic show. So many fucking people. I, yeah. For some reason, I still just like, don't expect anyone to come. <laughs> Do you feel that way? Yeah. I feel that way all the time, bro. Did you ever feel like... I mean, do you ever feel like pressure to like to keep everything up or keep everything going? Not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, oh wow, my shirt is buttoned the wrong way. <laughs> Interesting. Um, when I was younger, being on QC, quality control record label, mm -hmm. um, the my peers on my label were all urban, street, trap artists. Mm -hmm. So being, you know, 18, 19 years old, at the height of like the Migos and Bad and Bougie, and then Lil Baby comes, and then City Girls. And so when I was younger, there was sometimes this pressure of wanting to like fit into an urban crowd. Cause we used to, when I was, Younger, we used to do a lot of things together as like a family. And we'd always go places and then they play everyone's music and just like my music never fit in at the event with all of their music. Um, but as I got older, I started to realize that I am who I am. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, like, there's nothing I can't do. And I, and I stopped caring about what people thought. Mm -hmm. And I stopped creating for other people's approval. Yeah. There's always like a voice in my head of like, this probably could work, but my brain is like really over here. And I'm like, I'm always trying to like bridge the gap between them. Cause I think some of my favorite artists know how to be pop artists and they know how to be innovative, but they still know how to do it in an accessible way. Mm -hmm. But I was listening to your project today, Let's Start Here, and uh, Reach the Sunrise features Caesar. Like, do you, do you have any backstory of like that, that song or what happened there? Yeah, I mean, I think me and Daniel both respected each other's artistry mm -hmm. for quite some time now. And as I was getting very close to closing the album, I didn't have many male vocals. I had Tizo. And, you know, I had some backgrounds from Nick Hakim and um, Mac DeMarco, but I didn't really have much. And yeah, so I just hit him up one day, and we were both in New York, and um, and it just worked. Yeah. It was a late night. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun, though. We were in a really small room. Yeah. A no, lot of us. Yeah. And, I, yeah, he's so poetic, too, and, like, how oh, he's he... A, he's insane. He's, he's bro, insane. Insane. Yeah. Like, he's a superstar. We both kind of come from a background of, of faith and like being raised by Christian and almost like ov overly Christian parents mm. um, to the point where, yeah, even me, like around the time when, when you were coming out, I wasn't really listening to like hip hop music because mm. like my parents and like they, they, they just- they, Wouldn't let they, you. Yeah, they were saying like that stuff is like, you know. The devil. From the devil, yeah. And uh as I'm getting to know you and as I'm seeing you, it's like, oh, I, I, I was watching your Hot 97 interview and I'm watching like the interviews now and you are the same person, but yeah. you, you see it from a different context. I mean, really cool. I've also grown up a lot. Yeah. But... <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, you, you were still so composed and you were so like, 
you were still a genius back then, and I, I just don't think they, yeah, they understood. They, yeah. Just old people I don't, know, don't man. understand. People are fucking. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, man. Fuck people it. are just, people are late to certain parties. Yeah. You know what I mean? What was, what was your process for like, even like more like Strike or like uh, some of the bigger songs been releasing lately? Like, To be honest, I think it, it's hard to explain those songs, man, because it's, <laughs> it's just off the top. It's like quick. Just tell, yeah, just tell me it was in five minutes, bro. And it's such a different vibe than like any other, like, than like, Anything off of Let's Start Here, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's complete, it's night and day on literally the process of making the song, mm -hmm. you know? I imagine, yeah, Let's Start Here is like hours, hours of like, change this bass line here. Days. Jamming, like. Days. Yeah, days. Days, days weeks. It was Sing just, this part like this. Where things like Strike or Tesla, it's just more like, man, I'm here. Yeah. Record it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Put it out. It's human too, you know, though. Yeah, it's a lot more thought that go went into let's start here, and it's not to say that that's better. There's mm -hmm. no right or wrong. You know, it's not oh more thought is better, less thought is careless. Mm -hmm. It's just feeling. Yeah, you know, um, our intention. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the act of making music is spiritual to me. Yeah, I, I mean, the act of life. There's just something like I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. Like, yeah, my parents weren't really into music like that. I mean, my dad was trying, but that's why I say it feels spiritual sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. cause like, it comes from somewhere, and, and we just end up with it. And then when we try to like recreate it, we can't with our own hands. But like, when we let it flow, it just it's like the best product. So that's it's, so crazy that you say that. You know, I was gonna ask. I mm -hmm. something for me that was a big thing that caught my eye when I first heard your music was the category being under Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and. I, I didn't really understand it, you know, when I first heard um, a song for you and I saw that I had to like really break down the song. Like, I had to pull the lyrics up because that's just like for the life of me, I was like, man, you know, like I don't, I didn't have a, I don't have a, I don't, I don't categorize, like I don't put anything in a box. So when I saw it was Christian, I wasn't like, no, this can't be Christian. I was just like, okay, well. I need to dissect this song because I want to feel where that comes from, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it was so unique, you know? It was so, like, I, I, I think it gave this, the song, for me, a, a whole different perspective, mm -hmm. a whole different light and, like, just a whole different, like, like, just, like, whoa. Oh, definitely. It definitely influences me still. Yeah. Like, but yeah, destroy myself for you that, yeah, all throughout the Bible, there's like, there's co this concept of suffering for the sake of good and like putting yourself in harm's way for the sake of, of love, for like loving someone else. And I was going through a breakup and I was kind of like writing about the way that I would put myself through a little bit of hell because this person w wasn't too mature. Um, and I was kind of like, I, I would allow myself to like be treated just to far extensions that I, sh that I shouldn't have for the sake of like loving her. And, uh, and, that, and that concept was like me trying to place the Bible saying that Jesus was like doing that for our, for our sins. And I don't know, in a minute, in a minute we'll go in there, I'll play you some like the music that I'm working on. Um, I was like, oh, there's like weird synergies in this album and, and the kind of the stuff I'm creating. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I was just like sending you stuff too. I was like, I don't know why, yeah. but I just feel like I should be sending nah, Yachty like sick so. shit. <laughs> You're on the wave, bro. Thank you, man. It's, it's sick. I love it. I like the lo-fi feeling of it, mm -hmm. you know? I appreciate that type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I've been trying to embrace the concept of like the Wu way of like just letting things be how they are and accepting. I mean, I made it in my room in the East Village, one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. Shitty like sound just on the SM7B. But I don't know. I feel like if you just lean into it and you're like, this is who I am, then yeah. for some reason it's, it speaks. I'll tell you how I heard the song. My best friend who I do my podcast with, his name is Mitch. Mm -hmm. Uh, we go back and forth 
just all day, every day on music and shit. And I, I, he came in one day to the house and he played it. He does this thing where like, like he's not normal, he'll just like send a link. He like to like, he like if I'm eating or something <laughs> like that. Like, no, like sit down and well, like well, No, he'll like to just like to <laughs> sneakily, if he knows something's fire, he'll just like, <laughs> Play it in the background and won't say nothing. That's cute. You know, it'll catch my attention. <laughs> and uh, and I heard it. And I, I should you not, I might have played it like sixty times Damn. on loop. And I just thought it was so insane. And it was so times catchy. I I played it back over and over. When was this? Over. This was. It's 2022, 2021. Yeah. And we sat all day, like, how is this Christian <laughs> at first? Because so much now is so watered down. And it's unfortunate, this is a thought process, but so many people sound alike. Mm -hmm. So when one person slips through the crack and it's like, oh, shit, this is different. It's yeah. like, man, you get invested. Thank you, man. Yeah. As I get older, I'm like, oh, you know, I just want to make the stuff I like. And then if the people that I admire kind of like respect it and collaborate, but I don't know, it's all kind of... Fame, especially these days, just feels weird. Do you, do you feel famous or do you care about it at all? Do I feel famous? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you are, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't try to operate like it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I try to still do anything I want to do. Some things you just unfortunately cannot do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but... Back home, I do. Back home, I, you know, operate completely normal. No security, no nothing. Just mm -hmm. on my ones and twos. But, you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah. You know? There's no way you can reach a certain status and not, you know, life changes. Yeah. You know, it's being a, pop, a, a, a public figure, you know, someone of stature. And when you make music, it connects to people on certain levels mm -hmm. um, to where to where you cannot do the same things, you yeah. know? Um, you know, it's a little different, you know, rap music a little more different than, you know, like mm -hmm. other music, because it's just a little bit more crazed, yeah, but, for sure. and the culture of it, but, yeah, it's it's attention. It's it's like um, I talked about it. I had like this gallery last night. It was called "This Life Ain't Worth Eternal Damnation," and that's kind of just like a, for me that that was like a a comment that someone left after I posted that I was touring with Daniel Caesar. Basically, they were trying to say like, oh, you know, the route that you're going down, collaborating with these artists, and like making this kind of music, like, it's not worth it, like, trying to condemn me to hell. <laughs> and I was like, that's such a fire name for a gallery. And, uh, like, as I'm, as I'm growing and I'm super accomplishing my dreams, but I also get, like, super lonely and feel like I've experienced people that want me for other things than just, like, me. And, like, it's, like, it's such a weird, it's such a weird thing to battle with. But I don't know, I'm just trying to, Stay positive, but you you seem like you're hella positive. Like, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm 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 a huge optimist, yeah. optimistic person, man. That's good because life is so short. You only have so much time, so you have to enjoy your time while you can. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But you know, you're here until you aren't. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, after that. Yeah, you feel me? So like, I I, I don't try to waste my time. Anger is it takes a lot of energy to angry yeah. or mad or upset or anything so i'll try i'll live mm -hmm. no for sure growing up i kind of viewed life as like um you know you got to make it to heaven and like if you f fuck up too bad god's gonna like punish you and uh and it, and it, it took me to like Damn, even 20 you used to think like that <laughs> yes Damn. no yeah i mean i was like <laughs> I was I was a crazed kid in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, but yeah, it took me like 22, 23 to start thinking for myself. I moved to New York and mm -hmm. I just got around like artists and I got around like people just like me. And I was like, you know, I mean, 
life life is to be lived and i'm like allowed to make mistakes too mm -hmm. but i don't know i i just try to i try to stay with that mindset now like i still believe in god and i still believe that uh something made all this and there's a reason why like we have these voices but i'm i'm definitely evolving and i'm definitely like just walking in what I think I'm supposed to become. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't. I still don't want to call it the second evolution of your career, but to me, it just feels like that as a fan watching from the outside. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like you've also like reached a, a second like breakout moment or like you, you're being perceived, I think you're being perceived in a new way with this new stuff that you're dropping, so. For the longest, mm -hmm. I was, I wanted it to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, chapter two, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I, it was somewhere along the lines I started to relax, man. Like, you know, like at first I wanted to drop the project under a different name. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want it to be Lil Yachty. I love that, yeah. <laughs> and then I, somewhere along the lines, I was just like, no, I cannot shy away from the person that I am. Mm -hmm. The music I've made, my history, and my past, because my future is just as important. Mm -hmm. It's all me. It's not some character, it's not someone else. Mm -hmm. It's just me, it's all I like. Yeah. You know, so like I I I was like, no, nah, it's not my second coming or not. Nah, it's just I'm just evolving. It's still Lil Yachty, it's still, you know, red braids, it's still it's all one it's all one. Yeah. You know, it's just like that like you said, the great thing about, you know, him being a human being, you know, you you, you develop mm -hmm. and evolve and you grow and you strengthen and you just you know, yeah, the evolution. You push forward. Yeah, absolutely. And it's fucking scary, but you know, I, 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 I think that being said that I never fear change mm. or what's to come. Mm -hmm. I think I only ever fear um, falling too far from redemption. Yeah. You know, like getting to a place I can't dig myself out of. But mm -hmm. I think anything that can happen, yeah, possibly will, you know? And not to say that everything will, but like it can. It yeah. could, you know? And, you know, like, I mean by that's like just not being able to take care of my family and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe my mom have to work again or something. Like, you just never know, like those type of thoughts. But yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, it's, just, it's what it is. You just gotta <laughs> live, for, live through it.